Hi. Today we're going to go over the inlet and outlet views as well as the Judea views of the hips. Typically this will be ordered by orthopedics, but occasionally you'll do the inlet and outlet views from the ER based on things like car accidents or high velocity um, injuries, um, usually through motorcycle accidents or car accidents. Starting with the inlet view, this is usually going to be done in conjunction with an AP pelvis. So a lot of times you'll do the AP pelvis first just to get a good idea of what you're dealing with. Um, on this particular view, what we're doing is we're going to put a little bit of an angle on that. It's going to be about a 40 degree clotted angle. You're going to center on the ASIS right through the top here, down the mid-sagittal plane to get the entire pelvis on there. You want to make sure that your light is a little bit above the crest on both sides just to make sure that you get the whole length of the pelvis. This is going to be done on a 14 by 17 transverse cassette. You'll have your marker in the upper outer corner typically to take advantage of kind of the roundness of the iliac crest going along both sides. On this particular view, there are a few things that you're looking for. One, you want to see the entire iliac crest at the superior border on there. So you're looking at basically the shape of the iliac crest going along both sides and making sure that it's symmetrical going across on there. Another key area is going to be the pelvic brim. So you want to see the pelvic brim, which is going to be elongated when you compare it to your AP pelvis going all the way around through here. What you should see within the pelvic brim are the ischial spines going across on here. Typically, you do not see that on the AP pelvis, but on an, out, or, sorry, on an inlet view, you will see those within the pelvic brim. The foreshortening of the femoral necks are going to be pretty common when we're doing this view. It's, it's something that you'll see on your AP pelvis, but it isn't necessarily something that you need to see on this particular view. One of the main areas of interest is going to be the pubic bone and the ischium down at the inferior border of your image. So what you'll see is you'll see some superimposition of both of those bones going right over the top of each other, which will pretty much get rid of the obturator foramina on both sides. Just because of the orientation, a lot of times you're basically hiding those foramina because of the angulation of the tube. As far as rotation goes, you want to look at the spinous process and make sure that it's in the middle of the vertebral body going across the lower portion of the lumbar spine. You want to make sure the sacrum is midline as it is down right down the mid-sagittal plane and also down the mid-sagittal plane will be the symphysis pubis which will be on there. The relative size of the ala of the ilium should be about the same. So you should have one that's a little bit bigger than the other. In cases of trauma, sometimes they won't look symmetrical and that's simply because of bones being broken and shifting into different positions. The same thing goes with the rami of the ischium and the pubic bone. You're typically going to do this on a 14 by 17 cassette that's going to be in crosswise. It'll be um, in the bucky. You will typically have your marker towards the upper outside portion here to take advantage of the kind of the circular, semi-circular nature of the pelvis um, in terms of the wing on this view. You're going to center right down the ASIS. So if you find the ASIS as your landmark and go right down the middle of that, centering midline, you should be able to get this view with very little problems on there. Just make sure that there is a tiny bit of light above the crest on both sides of the body. So you will have to check the ASIS on both sides. Um, Rotation-wise, if there is some rotation, what you'll see is you'll see a shift in the sacrum typically. It will go towards one side of the pelvic brim as opposed to the other. You may see a little bit more of the greater and lesser trochanters on one side of the femurs as well. So you want to make sure that they are lying as flat as possible within reason. If they do have a broken pelvis, it's certainly going to be much more difficult to hold that position. In terms of what the legs should be doing, you should have the feet turned in and hide the lesser trochanters as much as possible like you do on an AP pelvis image. If the bones are broken though, you want to avoid doing as we slide this over a little bit, we're just going to look at the orientation of your patient relative to the tube. It's typically a 40 degree angle going down, entering at the level of the ASIS. And if you look at what happens to the actual skeleton, you have this kind of bat shape of the pelvis when you're looking at it without the rest of the lumbar vertebra on here. So what will happen is you'll get an accentuation of the circular nature of the top of the crest going across on there. You look down here, you can see that the pubic rami and the ischial rami are kind of lined up on top of each other, which kind of hides the obturator foramen in there. 
You should see the coccyx pretty clearly within that space. It can be a little bit further down depending on the patient that you have and what kind of pelvic tilt they have on there. But typically, this is what it should look like. On the outlet view, we're just putting an opposite angle on that, with a little less in terms of the tube angle on there. Typically for men, it's going to be about 20 to 35 degrees going up or shooting cephalad. For women, it will be about 30 to 45 degrees also going cephalad in this case. The area of interest is basically going to be the obturator foramen and the superior and inferior rami of the ischium and the pubic bone going across on here. You may see some text, just use a 10 by 12 going across on here, but we're going to stick with a 14 by 17 orientation just to get the entire pelvis going on there. Some areas that you should be looking for is the top of the crest going across on there, which will have a more straight line appearance going across on there. It will look a little bit more like a line as opposed to like a semicircle. The sacrum will be elongated quite a bit. And what we're doing with the elongation is we're also stretching out the obturator foramen and consequently the rami inferiorly and superior to those foramen. What we're looking for specifically is superior migration of the hemipelvis. So the bottom portion of the pelvis, we're looking to see if that's trending kind of upwards, typically from some type of fracture um, in any part of the rami going across on there. Um, you see, you can see correlating fractures within the wing of the pelvis occasionally, although you don't see them here. As we look over here on this half of the slide, this is what it's going to look like on the skeleton, minus the femoral heads being taken out here. This one's probably angled, I would say, a little bit too much because it's kind of throwing the pubic bone almost to the level of the top of the sacrum on there. So I would back off the angulation just a little bit on this because we want to keep the obturator foramen open on this and still see this, even though it's a little bit of an angle, you can still make out the pubic and ischial rami going across on here. You do not want to get the very top portion of the obturator foramen behind the wing of the pelvis. So I would say just angle this one a little bit less so that it looks like our previous image going across on there. The book uh, gives a serring point of about two and a half centimeters below the symphysis pubis on that. And I think that's more for the centering if you were just specifically looking at the obturator foramen and the rami on there. It's probably just a little bit higher going across on there. I would say it's pretty close to the ASIS on there. But if you have the light field right at the top of the crest and overlapping it just a little bit, you should be able to get the entire pelvis like you see on here. Moving on to the Jude views, what you'll get out of this is just basically a 45 degree angle pelvis. So what we're going to do is we're just going to angle the part in this case. So you're going to have a straight beam going the perpendicular angle to your bucky, but you'll have the patient at a 45 degree angle. So it's going to be in an LPO and an RPO position. The anatomy is going to look very similar to our lumbar spinal obliques because it is at the same angle. You're just going to be centered over the pelvis now instead of over the lumbar spine. But you should be able to see these Scotty dogs right at the lower portion of your image on there. The Scotty dogs will appear better when the pelvis is rotated a little bit more, a little less, depending on what level of the Scotty dog you're looking at, whether it's superior or inferior on here. What you want to make sure that you do is that you do get a true 45 degree oblique. So you want to make sure that you have a sponge going across on there. One side of the pelvis should be up, in this case is the right side, and one side should be flat down against the table, which is going to open up the wing of the pelvis here. That'll be your downside going across on that. What we talked about on the today views is kind of looking at the anterior column and the posterior column. This slide shows it pretty well what kind of areas that we're looking at on here. So the anterior column being up towards the top, posterior column being down towards the bottom and a little bit behind, we consider this to be the front of the pelvis going across on here. Um, with the uh, Today views, we want to see some specific areas within each one of those sections. On this position here, with the right side down against the table, we're going to look at a few different areas. This is going to be for the posterior column. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at our greater sciatic notch, our lesser sciatic notch going across on here. We are going to look at our dome of the acetabulum going here with yellow. And we'll also look at this right here, number two, or the green section is going to be the posterior wall of the acetabulum going across on here. 
And we're also going to see part of the crest typically on this, but ideally not. And then you usually can see the issue of tuberosity on this particular view as well. On the upside, what we're going to see is we're going to see the pelvic wing kind of coming across and superimposing on itself. What we want to see is we want to kind of see the pelvic brim going across on here, which means we're not going to see the greater and lesser sciatic notches on this one. You will see the acetabular dome going across on here. But we'll also to see the anterior portion going right across here of the um, acetabular line. You should be able to see the obturator foramen open on this particular side, um, as well as the superior pubic rami, or superior ischial rami going across on here, as well as the pubic rami down towards the bottom going across on here. This is basically what you're trying to look at. You want to just get them in a dice true 45 degree um, oblique. So you want to typically do these on 10 by 12 so that you can shield your patient appropriately. You will see a lot of techs do these on 14 by 17s because you can get both hips on each one, but because of the shielding requirements, typically you should do these as individual shots like you see here and on the previous one. Um, as far as the centering goes, you're going to use your ASIS to do your centering on this. Now, on this particular case, when the patient is LPO, what we have is this right side is up. So if you're looking at the upside, all you have to do is find the ASIS and center two and a half inches down to get right on the head of the femur, which will give you this whole area going across on here. If you're doing the downside in this case, which is the flattened area here, what you're gonna do is you're still gonna use the ASIS. So you're still gonna come down the same two and a half inches, but you are also gonna center medially two and a half inches to get on to the head of the femur on there. Now, if you do that and you use a 10 by 12 cassette lengthwise, you should be able to get a nice image going right across here and then just straight down and then you can shield appropriately either here or towards the inside although you do have to be careful if you do put a shield within the pelvic brim for females and typically if this is ordered with the inlet outlet views you wouldn't shield in that case anyway so you might as well not shield for the whole thing but if you have your patient's best interest at heart you can effectively get this entire area and still shield at least one half of the ovaries on the outside by simply putting a flat shield going right across on the edge here. So we've just given a summation pretty much of the inlet, outlet, and Judea views. Um, not a terribly different, difficult exam to do, but you don't see them quite as often, so you may have to refer back to your notes every once in a while to get the angle, angles that you need and sometimes the centering points. But if you remember the landmarks and the basic anatomy of what it looks like in relation to a pelvis, which you see a lot of, you should be able to do these views without any problems. Good luck.